Council, Minister of Finance, Economic Planning and Information Technology, His Excellency Calvin He, Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Ms. Grace Chang, Councillor, Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Mr. Colin John, Commissioner of Police, Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force. Also in the room this morning, we have Miss Ellen Tseng, First Secretary, Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Mr. Jerry Liu, Chief of the Taiwan Technical Mission. We have Miss Jacqueline Kreese, Acting Director, Information Technology Services Division. Mr. David Fu, Project Manager, Taiwan ICDF. Other project personnel from the Systems and Technology Corporation, Taiwan. International Integrated Systems Inc., IISI, also of Taiwan. We have Team Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force and the Information Technology Services Division. Members of the media, Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome. Indeed, I would like to describe today as a defining moment for the governments of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the Republic of China and Taiwan. We are here to celebrate success so we can give each other a round of applause. Also joining us in the room this morning is Mr. Edmund Jackson, Director General, Finance and Planning in the Ministry of Finance, Economic Planning and Information Technology. And I am your humble host this morning, Desri Armstrong. I would now like to call on the Commission of Police to bring some opening remarks. Commissioner John. Thank you, Master of Ceremonies. I just wish to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Gonzalo, Ambassador, for the Director, the director, um, director of Finance Company, um, Mr. Edmund Jackson, the persons who are behind this project, and everyone here present today. The Royal St. Vincent and Grandin's Police Force, we welcome this initiative and we thank the government and people of Taiwan for literally putting their money with their mouth right. This EBOS segment of the CCTV EBOS project is very relevant and very needed at this time. It is an initiative that can help to enhance the transportation in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It can assist the citizens in that they can have proper time management. They can determine when they are going to leave home to take a particular bus. We will be able to monitor the, bus, the buses. Also from the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force standpoint, the persons who are working at the traffic department in particular, and all police officers, because as the Minister often say, every police officer is a traffic officer. We will be able to monitor the bus system, and be able to assist in regulating traffic more effectively and more efficiently. This initiative is the latest that was contributed by the Taiwanese people. We have benefited from significant training from, as a result of the efforts and the donation of the Taiwanese government. Several police officers visited Taiwan and were trained in Taiwan in various areas. We also had the benefit of the police apprentice program 
through the YES program that is sponsored by the government and people of Taiwan. And just a few years ago, we received vehicles valued over 800,000 dollars, including two motorcycles that were donated by the Taiwanese people. The CCT, CCTV project, it is very helpful to us in terms of detection of crimes, prosecution, and deterring persons from committing crimes. I see here today the budget director, and I know that that is one of his pet peeves, and it's really good to see someone with um, financial muscles. I can't say what the other muscles. <laughs> um, supporting, supporting this initiative. You often call me and ask me how is it going and what we have to put in place. And I really am glad to see him here today. I just want to thank once again the government and people of Taiwan for visiting us in this regard and look forward for your continued cooperation and assistance to the Royal St. Vincent and the Grandines Police Force and to St. Vincent and the Grandines as a whole. We fully endorse this project and will do all in our powers to ensure that it is successful and that it is efficiently run and managed. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner John, for your remarks. And we are very glad that you have said that the police fully endorses the system. We are here, as I said earlier, at a defining moment in our country's history. In addition to celebrating the successful completion of the CCTV component of the project, we are also in the year of the 40th anniversary of diplomatic relations between the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines and the government and people of the Republic of China. And Tyron, I think we need to just pause a moment and just acknowledge that and give each other, those of us who are in the room representing both countries, another round of applause. In biblical terms, 40 years is a generation. So it means my mother was alive when these relations were formed. She's now deceased and I am here. So it has spanned a generation. And we are hopeful that this, these relations will continue for many years to come. I would now like to call Minister Gonzales, Honorable Camilo Gonzales, Minister of Finance, Economic Planning and Information Technology, to address us at this time. And they would have to send somebody here to fix it. But we, have, we now have the knowledge and the capacity um, to maintain this system on our own. And I'm very, very grateful. Uh, to them for that and I hope that this CCTV system will grow from here and that we'll find other applications um, for the, the eyes that we have in the sky and, um, and that we'll be able to put those eyes in other, in other locations and connect it to an ever-expanding network of CCTV cameras. Very often um, when we talk about crime fighting with the police and we talk at budget time um, they tell us that they need more boots on the ground, they need more people, they need to be able to monitor more and more locations. Um, well, these are boots on the ground, but like I said, they're eyes in the sky, and so the police can sit in kittels and monitor a um, uh, hundred locations uh, and more without actually sending somebody there uh, to see what's going on. So it's a very, very useful tool, and, and we're grateful, and it's, it's a manifestation of, of what can be done when you apply technology to real world problems. The other phase is already underway. And again, something that Vincentians can see and touch and feel. If you look around um, St. Vincent now at various places where people stop to wait for the bus, you will see these, these poles that have been erected. Um, and they have solar panels on the top and they have a little screen on the bus, on the, on the pole. Those are the bus stop. Um, intelligent stations that will become part of the intelligent bus management system and that will be a network again applying technology to the problem to the, to the challenges that we have where people can wait for the bus 
they can uh, get a little charge for their phone, they can monitor as passengers when buses are coming and going that will be going where they want to go. So if you are in town and you're heading to Glen, um, you can stand there, you can look at the screen and it can tell you when the next bus is coming that will be going to Glen or the next bus is coming that will be going to Barley, uh, and, uh, next bus going to Connery and so on. And you will know if, you can, if you're going to have to wait there for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or half an hour um, for the next bus. More than that, if you prefer uh, to travel on a particular bus, um, it will tell you if your favorite bus, I don't want to advertise any buses today, but if, if, if your favorite bus is, um, has a particular name, you'll be able to look and see whether your favorite bus is actually not in town heading out, but is actually in Connery heading to town. So if you want to take that particular bus, you know that you have to wait for it to come into town and head back out, so you can plan your day accordingly. The, the, um, our friends, our ICP, ICT people uh, with Taiwan, they've collaborated to create an app, a mobile app, so you don't have to go to the bus station to look at the screen. You'll be able to be, you, if you work, for example, in this building, and you want to take a particular bus home, you could take your cell phone out, your Android phone, your iPhone, you can take the phone out, you can look and see where your bus is. And that will give you enough time to get down to the bus station to catch the bus or wait for it to make a run and come back. Um, so it's very, very, a very, very useful piece of technology to help you rationalize your own day um, as a passenger and know what your bus um, is or is not doing. And if you are a bus driver, and you're trying to create a loyal clientele, this, was, this is very useful for you. Um, because I might, be, I might want to travel on a particular bus, but if I don't know where the bus is and I want to get home, I'll say, well, I'll take the next bus um, going to Rata Mill. But if I know my bus is just five minutes away, maybe I'll wait for my bus and tell the other bus, um, go ahead, I'm waiting for so-and-so, he's, he's five minutes behind you. Um, or whatever. So I think that there is, there is use here for the passenger. There's obviously use um, for drivers and, and bus operators who are trying to build a particular clientele. The, we have set up the infrastructure um, for this system. The, the missing ingredient right now is to get actual bus operators to sign up for the program so that they can put the they can put their information into the system and we can put the, the device as necessary onto your bus so that the, the system will know when your bus is coming, when your bus is going and where your bus is at a particular time. So we're urging again and we're going to have specific outreach uh, to the, the various bus associations um, to ensure that we have critical mass of, of bus operators on the system so that the system will be useful um, and, and we'll try to figure out ways to, to impress upon the, the bus drivers, the bus operators, how this system can be useful to improve the, the customer experience and also help them build a brand and improve their own uh, revenues in, in that regard. So that's, that's something that we're going to work on in this next phase. But again, it's all about looking at things that we wrestle with here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and seeing if technology can be applied to solve some of those challenges. And, and um, I think that the government and people of Taiwan have been very receptive to our request that we find ways to um, cooperate and use their technological expertise. Um, very grateful for their receptiveness. We're very grateful that they have come up with these types of solutions that we're applying here, both in the CCTV and also the bus management system. I want to point out also that uh, the government and people of Taiwan have been uh, considerate and compassionate and reliable friends uh, to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, um, both as we try to uh, continue our journey of development and also when we are in particular need and when we face challenges. And we, they have stood by us uh, in past natural disasters um, in myriad ways, 
they've stood by us when we've had challenges to our agriculture, um, various challenges to crops, and they're standing by us again today as we are emerging from the aftermath of the explosive eruptions of the Lasso River volcano. Um, and I want to thank them very much for their expressed willingness to help. Uh, they have already demonstrated uh, tangibly that they are going to stand with us in this, in this um, recovery. And even this morning, before the meeting, uh, His Excellency and I were discussing ways in which uh, Taiwan can assist in this particularly challenging time. And, and he's expressed once again uh, the willingness of his government to stand with St. Vincent and the Grenadines as we emerge from this challenge. So we, we have something here that has been in the works since 2019. I'm very grateful that it's, the point, it's at the point where it's complete and it, they're handing over to us for full-time management our CCTV. I'm very excited about the next phase with the bus management system and of course I am heartened by the support that the government and people of Taiwan, of, of Taiwan continue to offer us uh, in this hour, hour of need emerging from the volcanic eruption. So thank you very much, Your Excellency. Please convey our, our gratitude to your president and to the people of your country. And we hope to find other ways where Taiwan's knowledge and experience can help us um, accelerate our own uh, development um, and, and to solve some of the challenges that we face along the way. So thank you very much, and I'm grateful that we're at this point in time. Minister Gonzalez, for your very warm and comforting remarks with respect to the CCTV system and its virtues and also the relation between the Republic of China, Taiwan and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Indeed, over the years, Taiwan has proven to be a friend that stick it closer than a brother as the Bible says. So I would now like to invite Ambassador Hur to bring his remarks. Thank you, Madam Chair, uh, with a very perfect pronunciation of the <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, Honorable uh, Camilo Gonzalez, uh, my good friend, Minister of Finance, Economic Planning and Information Technology. And, uh, the Commissioner Golden John, the Royal St. Vincent and the Grandin's Police Force, and also Director uh, General uh, Edmund Jackson of uh, Financial and uh, Economic Planning of the Ministry, and also the Deputy uh, Director of ITSD, uh, General Chris, and also uh, I saw some police officers here, and also uh, uh, all media friends here uh, in, uh, in the room. Uh, good morning to all, all of you. Um, good morning. Mm -hmm. um, actually, I, at this moment, I have a lot of things to share with you. Uh, uh, but I don't want to make a very long remarks. Uh, <laughs> I'll pick up some points. Uh, once again, I'm very, very uh, glad and feel honored to have the opportunity to attend an important uh, occasion like this. Uh, today's handover uh, 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 ceremony is, uh, is a, a milestone of our bilateral uh, ICT project. And um, it's, um, if I recall, um, three years ago when I came here, that was the, uh, to your country. It was the time that we were at the end of our previous uh, uh, ICT project, the EDRM. And uh, at that time, my colleague at the embassy briefed me about this new project at that time, the uh, EBUS uh, project. And I 
had some questions about this project. Um, and actually, you have, you have the answers introduced by uh, Minister and also by my colleague. Because this project is a project that, uh, uh, to me, is unique from others. It's a project not directly benefit to the government agency, but also directly benefit to, to the general public. So, uh, so this project had, had my strong support. And then, um, in, uh, as Minister mentioned, year 2019, I will uh, uh, Minister Gonzalez and I signed the uh, implementation uh, agreement at that time. Then we launched this project until now. Two more, two more years passed, and you know this this uh, period of time is a very unique time because we we had the impact of COVID nineteen, we had the impact from the volcano eruption, we had the impact of dengue uh, fever, and a lot of things happened during this period of time. But uh, uh, I'm very glad that um, uh, our organization colleagues and our uh, colleagues in, uh, from our technical mission, they, and also some experts from Taiwan, they have done their best to carry out this project, implement this project. And today, then, we can uh, receive the the fruit, uh, fruitful result from uh, the, the very important part of this uh, EGOS program, that is the CCTV part. Uh, you just heard that Commissioner John and also Minister mentioned about uh, the CCTV system. Once the whole project complete, the general public, everyone here, include us, we are going to have a more efficient, more predictable, and more safer public transportation system. And it's a very important part for us to, to, to develop our economy here. When you see when everything is gone, volcano eruption is gone, when the COVID-19 pandemic is gone, I hope soon. Everything back to normal. When the cruise ship comes to town, thousands of people, if they can have a very convenient bus system to go to a beautiful scenery and spot, to see those beautiful scenery, that, that will create a lot of uh, economic, economic benefits. I hope that they will come very soon. Very soon. Um, since 2011, in total, we have uh, launched three IC, ICT projects. This is the third one, as I mentioned. This is the one that directly benefits to the general public here. Uh, and in the future, I mean, this project will uh, be completed in, uh, I believe, in the near future as planned. We are going to have now and another one. Um, one of our uh, development uh, experience, uh, the good part is our uh, ICT industry. I hope we can uh, uh, make good use of this part to to uh, to work together with our friends here. Um, I've been working here for almost three years. Um, as I said, uh, probably you don't feel that we haven't attended an occasion like this for quite some time because of COVID-19. So when I heard the uh, national entrance of mm -hmm. our two countries, mm -hmm. I felt very touching. Yeah. 
And you know what? Because um, today might be the last of my public appearance here in this country because I'm leaving my post at the end of this month. So, um, uh, so I, I'm very glad that what we have doing here, uh, uh, talk about this project only, can cause so many benefits to the general public. Not only mentioning other parts, but our, our uh, uh, task here, uh, work together with your government and with your people is quite comprehensive. Means to just mention about, uh, before the meeting we had some discussion, I will be here to assure you that we, we are not only friends, we are the same family member, actually, to me. This, this place, to me, is uh, another home. Uh, so I feel that when I knew that I'm leaving, actually, I feel <laughs> hope to be prolonged, stay here until the last day. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, you know, it's our system. Uh, I need to go back. But, uh, but here I want to uh, thank uh, the uh, government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, but also thank you, uh, uh, Minister Gonzalez, and also Commissioner John, and all so the Director General. We haven't uh, 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 have a formal meeting. Uh, all my colleagues will contact you, but actually a lot of uh, our uh, uh, like civil development fund things that we also need to bother you to. <laughs> Uh, to uh, to work together with us. So so uh, uh, all of you I feel appreciate very much. In the last few years, um, together we have been a lot, lot of things. If I may say that, uh, for example, I appreciate that you receive our President Tsai two years ago here. It, it was an excellent reception from your people side, from your government. I feel very much appreciated. I feel appreciate that you established an embassy in Taipei and your ambassador there is a very good ambassador. He, she even supported us when we had difficulty, difficulty you know, that it also has break out of the COVID-19. But she said something very encouraging, very supportive to us. We also um, uh, appreciate your support to our international participation. Um, you are, every time we say something in that at WHA or other international organizations. I will feel that the, the, the friendship is there. And, and you always, you are the one that always stand with us at our difficult moment. So we, we are doing the same, we are doing the same. So I can assure you that not, not the, uh, the past, but also in the future, as the minister said, um, we will, continue to work on together for our development, for our friendship. So uh, God bless us and I hope that our friendship will last long and forever. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador Thor. And indeed it's what I would describe as a bittersweet moment. We happen to have you here with us and we, we're sad that you are leaving, but that is the way of life. Thank you once more. We would now chronicle the journey between January 2019 and now. And to do that, I would call on Mr. Yasong Lee. 
and I would invite everyone to shift your positions, please, so we can have full view of. A lot, a lot of hard work and dedication went into this project, now a fully functioning system. So it is my privilege and honor to move a vote of thanks this morning. Firstly, and in everything, we give God thanks. Without him, nothing happens. It may not look like that at times, but without him, the world would not even exist. So we give God thanks for what we have accomplished with the system and with the project thus far. I would like to thank Honorable Camilla Gonzalez, our technology minister. Minister Gonzalez, your remarks warmed my heart. It was filled with hope and promise for continued relations and 
with Taiwan and the development of our country, in particular, technologically. Ambassador Thor, as I said, is a bittersweet moment. Your stewardship and oversight of the project was tremendous. In your own quiet way, you got the job done. Thank you very much. Ms. Grace Chan, Councillor at the Embassy, we would like to thank you for gracing us with your presence. Emphasis on the word gracing. Thank you very much. Commissioner of Police, Mr. Colin John, we thank you for fully endorsing this project and we know that you will put it to full use to gain the benefits for which it was conceptualized. Mr. Edmund Jackson, the one with the financial muscle. <laughs> we thank you for gracing us with your presence. And I know you are pleased that the monies put in by the government gained dividends. I am certain that you can say that, sir. Ms. Jacqueline Trace, our Director Acting at the Information Technology Services Division. We thank you here for your presence and for your team's work. I am going to single out a few of them. And when I do, could you please give them a round of applause? Mr. Malamez. <laughs> Mr. Kenuel Thompson. <laughs> Mr. Caswallan Duncan. but he worked tirelessly behind the scenes as well and because of the constraints of our accommodation he could not be here with us but he worked tirelessly and committedly also. Ms. Donnett O'Neill, one of the project coordinators. There are many others who worked on this system and on this project but I wish to single out those four persons. Mr. Olson Rodney from the Royal <laughs> I would like to let the commissioner know that we need more officers like you. Yes. <laughs> Who go above and beyond the call of duty. We want to thank you for your leadership at the center and we know that as long as you are there or that you pass on your your, your vibrancy and your passion for the success of the center, it will be in good hands going forward. Thank you very much. <laughs> Mr. David Fu, project manager from Tyron ICF. Every time we see David like he's always on a mission. <laughs> <laughs> And you can feel his, his passion and his, his desire to have this project be a success. Mr. Fu, thank you very much. And we want to ensure, assure you that we will do all in our power as Vincentians to make sure that the center and the system is functioning at all times. Thank you. Mr. Williams, Adelehu from Systems and Technology Corporation Taiwan. Your passion is second to none. <laughs> In that you want to believe that you are in sanction. <laughs> yes, your desire to see this as a success is, is, is very well known. And we thank you very much for your company's work here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mr. Yasun Lee from the International Integrated Systems Inc. We want to thank you. Well, Yasun, you're more or less of Vincentian. You. <laughs> <laughs> we have seen you so often that we have adopted you. <laughs> I don't know about getting your passport, that's a different matter. But in our hearts, we have adopted you. Thank you again and your company for all of the hard work that you have put in to this system. 
Members of the media, we want to thank you for being here today, for capturing the moment. And finally, ladies and gentlemen, thank you. Without you here this morning, we would not have had such a wonderful, short, but wonderful ceremony.